Good morning and welcome to the Dutton Homestead. So today I'm going to do a little bit of um, organization of my seeds that I seed saved throughout the season. And um, we're going to pull from some okra that I let go to seed. I didn't start out trying to see, save seeds when I did from them. Okra is very prolific. So when you look at them and they're like this big and maybe this big around, you're like, I'll just let it go one more day. The next day, they're too big. So what ended up happening was because of not picking as often as I should have or when I should have, um, a lot of times they would get really big and when they get really big, they get woody, they're tough. So I just let them go. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna save seeds from them like I meant to do that. So I have a lot of okra to do that with. And um, so we're gonna do that, but first, I want to get into this loofah. Now at the beginning of the season, this growing season, I had started four loofah plants. I thought it'd be a cool idea to try to grow some, some loofah. Uh, when it, I was finally able to put it into the ground, there was only one surviving plant that I had in the house that was able to go into the ground. And I had put it down in the lower garden, um, I had put it next to a trellis to see if it would go climb, and it did not. I took the uh, dirt from the seed pots of the three remaining that did not do anything, and I threw them into my, um, I had four big pots of sweet potatoes. You might've seen the video um, that I was growing sweet potatoes in. They actually did pretty good, uh, especially compared to what we're getting, not getting out of the garden this year, of the in-ground garden. Um, so I had tossed the dirt into the bucket just because I could see that the, the dirt was starting to, to go compress down. And so it was like every time I had extra leftover potting soil, I just threw it in there to, to add more. Um, and then suddenly one day we noticed that there were um, the flowers from the sweet potatoes. They were all purple, but then there was a yellow flower, a couple yellow flowers, and we were like, what's that? And then we figured out that one of those seed pots that I threw in there actually took. And so I had one loofah. I wanted a whole bunch of them because I thought it'd be fun to grow loofah. I mean, I'm a New England girl, so growing loofah is not something I ever thought about doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. You can hear the seeds in it right now and see if there if this is actually big and wide enough because it's very it's kind of kind of small um, to see if there is any actually of the loofah in it. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and get started to try to try. So I've never done this before, so I'm gonna start off by making a cut at the end. Cut off the stem. And I'm just trying to like try and rip it. I don't want to destroy anything if there is anything good in there. Um, because I haven't done this before. <laughs> Big surprise. I'm try to tear it open. I'll move the camera down when there's anything to see. Now it's very fibrous in there. I think the skin is supposed to peel away. I'm not sure if this got actually mature enough before it started drying out to actually do anything. You see the seeds, got some seeds in there. I will try and grow some more again this coming year. Let's see what happens with that. And lots of seeds. So what's amazing is if you can actually get them to grow, you get one one seed to get it to grow if, if it takes and out of that you can get you can get if you're good at it and the conditions are right like dozens of loofahs off, the, off that one seed and then if of one loofah you can get dozens of seeds to start all over again so that's kind of nifty Probably got like 20 seeds in there so far. I'm still hearing some in here. Let's 
So this would be your fibrous loofah, like what you would buy in the store. I don't think I don't think it's gonna be enough here to actually use. Um, but just the fact that when I had given up and actually grew, I think it's pretty cool. So if this had been reached maturity, I think I'd have some roofing here to work with. To make stuff with. But I think that's the I think that's the gist of it right there. So many seeds. So <laughs> this is the empty shell. The outer dried skin of it. And I don't think I can actually get any more out of here. But so this is the loofah. <laughs> this is my loofah. <laughs> I may tie it up with a little bit of cord and stick it in the shower just so I can use it once or twice. <laughs> but that was fun. That was neat. I will do this again. So for seed saving, what you really need to do is to keep them in a cool and dark environment in order to make them last as long as they can. Um, some people think that they only last or seem to believe that they only last like a year, but if you keep them in the right conditions, they can last years, years. So what I'm doing rather than buying envelopes to put them in and then uh, put them in my seed box, I uh, am making my own envelopes out of paper bags. My dad gets Amazon Fresh every couple weeks, and so I get paper bags from him if I need them. And I just cut it into a diamond, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fold it and make it into an envelope. So I just taped the edges, now I have an envelope, and I'm gonna put the 46, 46 loofah seeds that I got out of that one small loofah in here. I will tape that up and write on it loofah 2022 and then in the spring I will start the new ones. I think I just dropped a seed and I think Moya's eating it. Trying to. She doesn't like it. It's probably good. I'm gonna go ahead and seal that up so they don't fall out and get confused with others. And right on that loop. Now I'm going to go ahead and start getting the okra seeds out. As I mentioned, I let way too many okra go to seed. This is this is not even all of them, but I didn't see any point in. Um, it takes one okra seed, one successful okra seed, to give you probably in a 70 80 okra I mean they, if you if you if it's getting water it's getting light it just keeps producing it's amazing we have okra still out there producing I didn't think that it would because we got a frost three nights in a row and then like for an entire week I didn't see any new flowers and I'm like oh no they're done and I was gonna ask Rick to to slice them off like to, to chop the bottoms of them off let them um, just keep the roots in there because it'd be good for the, for the soil system. But I'm glad I didn't because yesterday I saw new okra and I saw new flowers. So we're still getting them. So I don't, I, <laughs> I have more than what I need. So again, it looks like a little loofah, um, but one okra plant, you have to cut into it with the scissors, back with the scissors. One okra plant or one okra, vegetable, I'm just going to call it a fruit, so many seeds. So they're well dried, get them out, Here I'm all drop in there. I still haven't found like all kinds of recipes of what to do with okra. I am making today, um, for dinner tonight, I'll be making some black bean soup and I'm gonna throw some okra in, see how that goes. 
Um, I hear a lot of people use them in the soups and stews and stuff, and okra is so good for you. So that one is pretty much all pulled apart. And there's all the seeds from them. I'm gonna give them a count just to see how many is in there. Probably count a couple of them so I can get an average of how many seeds are in there. Because I just think it's amazing how God makes it so you can keep producing. You can just keep... God's, God's way is just perfect. It's just awesome. That is one of the reasons why most of like... Most people that are trying to grow their own food will not buy GMO, don't wanna buy GMO seeds. Well, the thing is, is they're not supposed to be selling GMO seeds to consumers anyway. Those are seeds that are sent to, to farmers um, that mass produce. However, if you save seeds from something that you bought that was mass produced and you're expecting to grow, you, you're not gonna have as good results. Um, that is why most people want to get seeds that are not GMO. Not GMO meaning heirloom seeds or organic seeds, seeds that have not been messed with um, any type of chemicals that are gonna prevent them from reproducing. Um, so if you have such seeds that are untouched that have are by them, then you have non-GMO seeds. You have heirloom seeds. These are heirloom seeds. Clearly, I needed a bigger envelope. So, why okra? Why is okra good for you? What do people do with okra? Prior to moving down here, I had never heard of okra. So, I don't think it's really a northern thing unless I was just extremely sheltered. But last year, um, last growing season of 2021, Rick wanted to grow some. I'm like, sure. And it grew prolifically. It was great. We only put one plant in it. It was fantastic. So we decided to do more this year. So I planted six initially, and then I have six more that are going, or four more that are going out there right now that I planted like halfway through the season. So okra is kind of a big deal down here. You can get it in any grocery store. It's already pre-sliced, breaded, and ready to fry. I do tend to think that once you fry it, it kind of depletes uh, a lot of the nutritional value to it. And I was gonna tell you why this is so nutritious. So I looked it up to see why it was good. Um, eight okra pods, probably like about this size, maybe a little bit bigger. I usually picked them when they were a little bit bigger. Um, but eight of them have only have 31 calories. They have two grams of protein, 0.2 grams of fat, seven grams of carbs, three grams of fiber. They have of the recommended daily allowance of the rest of what I'm gonna read, manganese, I think I pronounced that right, um, which is a trace mineral, mineral that we need in our bodies to function properly, has 33% of the recommended daily allowance. Um, vitamin C, 24%, thiamine, 16%, folate, 14%, magnesium, 13%, vitamin B6, 12%, and copper, another mineral, 12%. So it's super good for you. Um, a lot of people, I mean, a big thing that I, that I found when I was surfing, oh, why is this such a big deal? Um, people will seep raw pods, for 24 hours in water and drink it, and it's thought to be a weight loss aid. Um, I guess back in one of the world wars, I think World War II, when coffee got scarce, people were drying, using the dried seeds as, co seeds as coffee, and I'm like, is there caffeine in those seeds? There is not, but apparently it tastes, has that nutty taste, has, so if you didn't have coffee and you just, you wanted, a taste and more for the taste rather than the pick-me-up it has a um, like a nutty flavor a, a, almost a black tea but a nutty fla flavor so people were doing that so that's what the big deal about okra is so I thought that was kind of cool I am using okra tonight when when we first started harvesting it was around the time that I got uh, my freeze dryer arrived so I was freeze drying. I have jars and jars of freeze dry. I may still have some in the freezer. If I do, I need to figure out what to do with it. 
Tonight I am making uh, black bean soup. I'm doing this because I canned black beans earlier this week and I just want to see if I, before I can any more dried beans, I just want to see how they, how they turned out in a soup. I have um, carrots, which I had to buy in, in, in celery, which I had to buy in a store because I haven't had any success with carrots, really. Um, celery, not so much either. Those are two, more, two of the things I'm still working on, trying to figure out how are people doing this? How are they growing them? Um, but I do have okra in there. I've got three quarts of the, the bone broth in there because it is soup season, which is why I keep making bone broth when I have bones to be able to do that. The main point of this video was to show you seed saving, um, to show you what happened with that one loofah plant that we were able to, uh, that we were able to harvest. So it's kind of cool. It's a little thing, but I mean, I might be able to use it a couple of times and I'll definitely be growing it again next year. Uh, with probably well over 2000 okra seeds, I wanna make that available if you are like one of the first six people to comment, you want me to send you some okra seeds to try and plant your own this coming season, um, go ahead and comment and I'll get in touch with you about how to get them to you. Uh, I also wanted to try and ex explain or show some of my northern friends um, what okra is all about and why it's important to uh, people, you know, to your health and, and it's, a, it's such a big deal down here. And you can grow it more than likely in the growing zones like in New Hampshire and in Maine, my friends that are up there. You can grow it in uh, growing zones four through 11. Um, all you need to do is figure out when your first or when, when the last possible freeze date is. And you can do that by Googling what your freeze date is by putting in your zip code and then um, start them inside like four or six weeks before that date and then when you're pretty sure and then you look at your 10-day forecast and it doesn't look like you're going to get a freeze get them in the ground it takes i think it said 50 to 60 days to start producing and then if it's if you get some hot weather it's just going to keep producing so that's it for today be a blessing and be blessed